Oh, oh, follow, follow, follow. Got him. Oh, 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 geez, that was freaking awesome. I take back everything I said about you, Buzzbait. <laughs> <laughs> Hey folks, sorry it's been a week or two since I posted, but I really had to take some time for my family. I recently had to put down one of our dogs and you know, it's been a tough time for the family, but we're getting through it now. So bringing you some more fishing content. Now today's video is a west side snakehead trip I took. And I'm gonna pass on a lot of information and a lot of tips along the way. But let's get to the intro right here on the water. Good morning, folks. It's been a bit of a rough week. If you follow me on my Facebook personal page, you know what I'm talking about. But moving on from that, at least for right now, I'm doing some snakehead fishing on my home waters. My home waters are on the western side of the Chesapeake. I don't know them very well. <laughs> it's like I know a few spots that uh, snakehead tend to hang around here. I mean, I've been out here probably once before in a serious way. I've gotten shore strikes, I've even caught a few but I'm really trying to bump those numbers up. <laughs> so I certainly haven't had a stellar day out here yet. So I don't know exactly what they're gonna be liking yet. That's a code I'm gonna have to crack. I'm up for the challenge though. And now I'm gonna start slinging with my brand new custom rod from Katie Lynn. <laughs> I'm telling you, this thing is beautiful. Oh, I can't wait to use this rod. It's got these award-winning microwave guides on it. So I'm going to be casting a country mile with it. Oh, I just can't wait. Oh, I can't wait to put some bend in this line. Oh, that's actually too far. I <laughs> put too much into it. Still got to get used to the guides. <laughs> but now it's going to be the game of trying to find them, folks, and seeing what they want. I mean, I literally, like I said before, don't know this water that well. But anyway, folks, I'm gonna get to it and hopefully I'll have some action for you in a few minutes. Whew, got one. Got one, got one, got one. On the old swim bait. <laughs> All right, folks. <laughs> uh, the skunk is out the boat. And if you open up, we can get this over faster. I'm just saying. There we go. Now she's not a big one. <laughs> but she gets the skunk out of the boat. And she's a nice little west side specimen. What's she got going on with your lip here, buddy? She's been caught recently, as I can see the wound healing from a pre, well, she was hooked recently. I won't say that she was necessarily released, but she was definitely hooked recently. And I'll show you exactly what she smacked in one second, because she bit it almost right at the boat. There you go, buddy. Get a little bigger for me. Oh, she wrecked my bait. She wrecked it. Dang it. <laughs> Folks, when you're on the water in a kayak, it is really tough to beat one of these Plano roll-up tackle bags. They hold so much gear, it's so easily accessible. Definitely check it out. All right, folks, so what she hit is a little, I think about three, three and a half inch spark shad. And it's one of my favorite lures. There's no two ways about it. Now that they have them, they come in a five inch variety, four inch, and either three inch or three inch change. But I'm putting this on about what I think is a 4 aught with a little big for it, honestly. But about a 4 aught Berkeley Fusion swim bait hook. 
and I'm telling you, she hit it, I mean, just like right at the boat. Right at the freaking boat she hit it. Now, I've pulled buzz baits over this area. I threw my mouse in this area. No takers. Thus far, it looks like, and that's one fish, you know. One fish does not a pattern make, but I didn't get any follows, any swirls, nothing on my top waters yet. So it may be the case today that swim bait is king. Oh, oh, follow, follow, follow. Got him. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, jeez. That was freaking awesome. That's a nice one, too. I take back everything I said about you, Buzzbait. <laughs> oh, God, was that sweet or what? And I had the camera on. Come here, Net. Oh, it's a nice one. Oh, wow. God, was that awesome. Boy, that was awesome. Now this is on a custom buzz bait by my buddy Jamie Simmering. So I can't give you a link to this one. He doesn't sell them, he just makes them for his buddy. So thanks, Jamie. <laughs> but there are some great ones out there. Check out the buzz baits. I'm gonna demo these for you soon. Check out the buzz baits over at SS Custom Baits. Another great model of lure to try. Oh, I know you little monster. I know. <laughs> God, that was an, oh God. Got this all the wig, the follow, the strike, and she jumped out of the water when she... Oh. <laughs> oh, you made my day, buddy. You made my day. Now, she may have some old wounds as well from some uh, hook action. Oh, she is tight. <laughs> she is a fighter, boy. Gotcha. Okay, she's on the grips. Ooh, she is prego. Ooh, she's prego. So you're a mean girl, huh? It's all right, I like that. <laughs> My hemostats aren't gonna be up to getting this hook out. I can tell by looking at it. There we go. Buzz bait out. And I'm gonna show you this snake a snake. There she is. I'm gonna guess and say 23. But a thick one too, look at this belly. Look at that belly. Oh, I left my bump board. But I'd estimate and say she's probably, yeah, about 22, 23. Look at that little gorgeous thing. Thank you for that awesome strike. Blasted it. Thank you so much. All right. You little beauty. I love you little suckers. There you go now. <laughs> yeah. Whew. The thing about my home waters here is that there's a limited amount of quality snakehead water because of the nature of the structure around here. Like, snakehead can and will relate to docks if that's all they have to work with. Uh, same thing goes with timber. But ideally, what snakehead like, in my experience anyway, is shallow, grassy water. And there's little of that around here. And they're kind of far apart, the areas that do exist. <laughs> so I never look forward to pedaling to the next one because it takes a minute, honestly. It takes a minute to get over that. So every fish spooked or every fish that's missed, it hurts that much more because, for instance, on the Eastern shore waters that I fish, it's like I can cast in a 300, oh, he just went for it. I think he just went for it and missed it. I think I just spooked him. Again, son of a bee. <sighs> but like I was saying, on the eastern shore and a lot of the waters I fish, you can cast 360 degrees in any direction and it's all snakehead water around you. Like all of it. It's just different, man. It's just different. So here I really like to take my time, keep my patience about me and get each one that I have a shot at, man. It's crucial. Now folks, if this camera here picks it up, what you can see here is that I'm starting to encounter a different kind of grass. And that grass is extending fairly well out into open water. And I'm seeing a lot of action out here. <laughs> a lot of feeding action. Now, the buzz bait is a great lure, but since it has exposed hooks, it's not great for fishing this kind of grass. What's gonna happen far too often 
is that the open hooks on this buzz bait are going to get caught by that stuff. And as soon as you have some of that grass on your buzz bait, well, A, you'll be lucky if the blade works anymore. You can't spin with that grass in the way. And B, if you do foul it, it's going to hurt really bad if a fish follows it after that doesn't take. You know what I'm saying? So, some great lures to use instead when you encounter situations like this are the Stanley Top Toad or in your standard Ribbit Frog. But to rig it up on a Berkeley Fusion hook, you thread that rivet onto the actual corkscrew, then line it up, see when your hook should be puncturing through, hit roughly that spot, that'll bring it through the top. Now on a rivet, there's a slot in there for your hook to sit, so it's more weedless, but even so, I will tuck it back in to the rubber just so slightly to give it that extra weedless capacity. I'm just going to use a palomar knot to tie it on and then of course lubricate it and now we're ready to fish. So I'm going to try white first but if I don't get anything you'll see me switching pretty quickly. So I have a lot of faith in my watermelon type colors. Having faith in your lures is a big deal man because you just fish so differently. When you have high confidence in a lure you'll make cast you normally wouldn't make. I mean you're you're much more precise with what you're actually trying to cast to. Your head's in the game, and that's what's really important. Got him! Got him! Yes! Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I got the watcher. You see this log right in front of me over here? I pulled my rivet across there twice. Nothing. No movement, nothing. I'm like, you know what? Let me give the mouse a shot. You know, sometimes that slow presentation can make all the difference. And, well, here's the proof. Not that this is in any way a big snakehead at all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I love you rascals. I love you so much. Yeah, not that it's anyway a big snakehead. Oh, he, she is shaking. She is shaking. Here, let me get her off of here. All right, little fella. <laughs> Ooh, but that, it just shows you the value sometimes of slowing it down. Uh, I see a lot of people out there who like to burn in snakehead lures of various kinds, be it, oh, whopper ploppers, buzz baits, and I see them just burning it. I'm here to tell you, folks, <laughs> at least in my neck of the woods, I've heard that the snakehead up towards Jersey and PA will follow moving baits and fast baits a lot better. But down here in Maryland, I tend to have a lot better luck with slow presentations than I do with fast ones. All right, let's keep the party going. Well, folks, unfortunately, I couldn't keep the party going for snakehead, but I did find some perch. I always take an ultralight with me because I'm a multi-species guy, and you never know what bite's gonna happen. And for instance, today the sun came out and the tide came in and pushed those snakehead way up into cover. So I spent some time catching some more perch on the day, but I hope this video has helped you with some tips for snakehead fishing. If you're new here, please like, share, and subscribe. Good luck on the water, folks, and have a good one.